Hello, everybody. How are you? It's Sharon here. Today, I'm here to chat about maxi dresses. With the advent of warmer weather, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, Jen with Jen Sewing Room and Carmen with Carmen Salome. Both of them have YouTube channels. I do hope you're following them. I'll link below. Those two have had a chance to meet face to face already, and I haven't had that opportunity. They're in Florida. I'm in Texas. A little bit harder for me to get together for coffee. You know what I mean? They're chatting online, and we are doing a maxi dress challenge. What we are doing is the three of us are using the very same fabric, but we're using a vintage pattern that we choose of our own, and we will reveal it on March 31st, so you can see how the same fabric looks on three different people in three different vintage patterns. We want to invite you to sew along with us. So it is a hashtag March Madness Maxi. I'll put that in the comments below. We'd love for you to choose a vintage maxi pattern and sew it up anytime between March 1st and March 31st and just tag us. Use the hashtag and tag us on Instagram. Because the challenges use a vintage sewing pattern, I thought it would be really fun to do a little bit of inspo. I looked at some current runway fashions, looked at the runway shows, and I also looked at maxis that are currently on the websites for some of the higher end uh, department stores. And what I did is I looked at inspo and then I found a vintage pattern that you could use and we're not recreating it exactly, but you're giving kind of the vibe. Then you're using your vintage pattern to get something that looks very current for 2020. So I've got a Pinterest board where I've pinned all kinds of maxi dress inspiration, found a few, so I've taken a few inspiration and I found a few vintage patterns, kind of matched them up. And I will explain to you how you can recreate to get that look. Be sure to stick around to the end because I will share with you the very first vintage maxi pattern that I ever sewed. I repurchased it off of eBay a few years ago. I just thought that would be very fun, as well as the fabric that Jen and Carmen and I are using for this challenge. and. I'm not going to show you which pattern I'm sewing because we aren't sharing that with each other even, but I will show you a number of patterns that I am choosing from, and maybe you can guess which one I'm going to do. The vintage patterns that I matched them up with are from late 70s to early 80s, and that was mostly because I happened to have five pattern counter books from that time period. Without further ado, here is the runway fashion with a vintage pattern to kind of match it up and recreate that look. On Pinterest, I have a board that I called maxi dresses, and there I have pinned a number of different maxi dresses that I'm using as inspiration. You can visit my Pinterest account. I will certainly link that below for you. And let's start with inspiration. I found this strapless button front top from the pre-fall 2020 by Brandon Maxwell. I just loved the look on this. What I would do to recreate that is look for a vintage pattern that is strapless, has some structure there, that has a full skirt. And this particular one, McCall's 9614, also has a center front seam, which you could leave open. Now, one of the easiest things to do with a dress pattern is to lengthen it into a maxi. And don't forget to look at the line drawings when you're looking for patterns. The next inspiration dress we're going to look at is this purple maxi from Studio 189. It is an ampere waist with multi-tiered ruffles going down. It's actually a pretty basic shape. I would look for a vintage pattern that has an ampere waist. This one has that. It doesn't have the same neckline. You could change it or you could do a V-neckline. It has that tiny little drop shoulder. You could shorten that if you wish. Now you would need to lengthen this to a maxi length and you would also need to slice it in a couple places and add your tiers, your ruffled tiers. Now, if you're not comfortable doing that, you could always combine a maxi skirt tiered pattern with this pattern to achieve that look. The next designer inspiration dress we're looking at is from spring 2020, and it's this beautiful white summer dress. Now, I would look for a vintage pattern that has that straight across neckline with the thin straps that comes in at the waist and has a gathered skirt at the waist. For example, this one from the late 70s, you would need to make the bottom ruffle much wider and fuller to achieve that designer look. This blue dress is another example of how that 70s pattern could be sewn to look very current for a design from 2020. 
The next designer inspiration dress that we're looking at is the black and white color black dress. This is from designer Brandon Maxwell, pre-fall 2020. The patterns that I found do not have those armbands, but you could certainly add them if you wish. I would look for a vintage pattern with an ampere waist, such as this one, this Vogue 8304. And I would just color block that bodice, black on top and white on the bottom with those small straps. And here is another option that's not as obvious. You do need to look at the line drawings for this one to see that it does have that same shape. It's just covered up by the illustrations and the shawls. You would need to lengthen it a little bit, color blocking. You could also achieve that look. Now this season on the store websites, I have seen a number of simple silhouettes. They're a tank style top maxi dress, probably out of knits. This would be very easy to recreate. You could take a tank top pattern and lengthen it to a maxi dress or look at loungewear or nightwear. This is designer John Klaus, Klaus, Klaus. Well, you get, you get the drift. And this could easily recreate that look. You could eliminate the elastic in the waistline and that tie belt, and you would not need to add the buttons that they have here. Of course, you can always make it easy on yourself and just purchase a vintage pattern. That is a tank top maxi dress. Now this maxi dress just screams summer to me. I really liked the colorful color blocking on this and the shape really is reminiscent to 70s and early 80s to me, such as this McCall's Make It Tonight pattern. It's got that look. You can wear it off the shoulder with the small ruffle. I would make the ruffle larger, of course, and it already is a maxi length. Of course, you would need to split it and add more tiers and color block it. Just look at those lines again, and that will show you if the basic shape is going to work. The next designer inspiration, it's this sequin slip dress. Sewing a vintage pattern out of sequins is going to actually make it look fairly current because sequins are so trendy right now. So I would just look for a vintage slip dress pattern, 70s, 80s, or 90s, or I happen to have this one in my stash. It's Vogue. 1530, and it actually has pretty much the same shape as that one we were looking at. Be a very easy one to recreate. On my Pinterest board for the maxi dresses, I also pinned a lot of slip style dresses. I found a lot of them when I was looking at the runway sites and on store sites that could easily be recreated using vintage patterns. 70s, 80s, or 90s had a number of slip dress patterns available. Another trend that I saw was multi-tiered ruffles. You're going to be able to find a lot of vintage patterns from the 70s, 80s, and 90s to recreate that look. When I saw this designer dress, while it's not something that I would probably wear, I was very intrigued by it and it immediately thought of a vintage pattern that I do have in my stash. It was the train that drew my attention. Do you see how similar this is? Now the designer dress, that I showed previously does not have that impure waist. You would need to lower that waistline and add a ruffle to the front, but it also has that train on the back, just as this dress does. Maybe you want to make a maxi skirt instead of a maxi dress. I like this maxi denim skirt. I think it's very fresh and current. I would look for a vintage pattern that is a button front. This particular one that I saw has a wrap, which could work, might be a little heavy. You would need to slip that and put that great big ruffled hem in there. Or you could start with a button front that has pockets in it already and add your great big length in that a little bit and add your ruffle. Free People is one of the sites that I really enjoy browsing to get ideas. And I saw this wrap around maxi dress that I really liked. Whatever vintage pattern you find, you would likely have to add the ruffles, and the ruffles are what making it really current. For example, Vogue 7112, and I don't want y'all to go buy this one up because I've been trying to find it, and it's running about $30 on eBay, which is more than I want to spend. Of course, there's always a designer pattern that you could go with to create that look also. I know you're probably shocked. 
but I could not find a current designer dress to recreate this look from 1983. I hope you enjoyed that runway inspiration and vintage pattern matchup. As promised at the beginning of the video, I'm going to share with you the very first maxi skirt that I ever sewed, and it is this one. It is 9232 Simplicity from 1970. Isn't that just a really fun pattern? That, you know, I don't think I ever shared with you my story about how I started sewing. I was eight years old, I was introduced to sewing, and I'm completely self-taught from there. That's another video for another day. But this is my very first maxi pattern that I ever sewed, and you know what? There's a story behind this one, too, and I think that will be a video for another day, too. The other thing I promised was to share with you the fabric that Jen and Carmen and I are using to make our maxi dresses. And it is this tropical print. We actually ordered it from Hawaii Fabric Mart. I will leave the link below. Pricing was very reasonable, as was shipping. And shipping was really fast. And it's a really nice white rayon. As I mentioned earlier in the video, Jen, Carmen, and I are not sharing with one another what vintage pattern we are using to sew up that fabric. It's going to be really fun on March 31st when we all reveal what we have decided to sew. In my hands, I have a few vintage patterns. One of these patterns will be what I choose to sew. The Bill Tice pattern. I have another Bill Tice pattern. I have a, I have a Halston pattern. I have a McCall's Make It Tonight pattern. I have a Simplicity Jiffy pattern. I have a Vogue designer pattern. Another Vogue designer pattern. And lastly, another Vogue designer pattern. In terms of vintage for this challenge, we have decided that anything from 1999 or earlier is perfectly acceptable. I certainly hope you will join us for the March Madness Maxi hashtag. March Madness Maxi hashtag. You know what? There is another maxi dress challenge going on on Instagram. Jen and Carmen and I did not know about that when we put together our maxi dress challenge. And T with Crumpets T and Sewing, I will link her YouTube channel below. She wasn't aware of the one that we were going to do. So anyway, what I wanted to tell you is that if you saw a maxi dress, you can enter it in both. You have an opportunity to be involved in both maxi dress challenges. Again, she has all the details on her song channel. And Jen, I will link to her video that has all the details on this challenge. I'm Sharon with Sharon So. Thumbs up if you like the video. Please subscribe if you have not subscribed so you won't miss future videos. Until next time, happy sewing.